Okay, recording is going. Awesome. So uh, we have three meetings scheduled for design meetings in the next month. Uh, most notably tomorrow, we have a generator planning meeting up for discussion. May 19th, we have a discussion on guiding principles for Rust, driven by some of the uh, work I that I have Nico this backwards. Are putting into that. Oh, that is backward. Yes. Right. The 19th, we will do some uh, belated status updates. And the 26th, we will do Rust language guiding principles. Meanwhile, uh, as usual, please take a look at the action items list. And uh, if there's anything that you either haven't done or have done but haven't checked off, please update that. Pending, there is a pending proposal listed that I'm assuming the action item is still the same of uh, summarizing the current situation. Correct. And then any updates on nominated RFCs that do need further discussion? Well, there's, there aren't any marked as nominated. Maybe there should have been, if anyone has. Yeah, I, I didn't nominate it, but uh, we discussed in this meeting that we were going to merge the over-constraining and omitting unsafe impulse RFC, but I have proposed to merge and then no one else checked their box. So we I don't know have. if people are having second thoughts about that or if it's... Or just possibly people, people just boxes. didn't catch the RFC bot ping. So uh, I didn't notice it yet. I'm behind on my notifications. Uh, yeah, that's, that's 2316. Mm -hmm. 2316, yes, that is up I, near the top of rfcbot.rs. So, yeah. Huh. I didn't get a ping. Well, I don't think I did either. Weird. Or at least I don't have a GitHub notification. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, folks, take a look at that one. There's also one other one that uh, uh, I um, proposed to merge 84988. So uh, that one needs a look from other people as well. The short version is that uh, WebAssembly doesn't have the constraints that motivated us to originally make target feature unsafe because WebAssembly uh, verification will always make sure that either you can run something or you can't, but you can't run something your CPU doesn't understand. So the proposal is to make target feature not require unsafe on WebAssembly. Sorry, I lost. What, what are we talking about? Uh, this was um, on, also on the RFC bot list. I was pulling up that list to see if anything yeah. else had uh, slipped by. This I is see. Rustling Rust poll 84988. We should extend right. the triage. Mark, can you record an action item to Nico to open an issue about including pending FCPs in the triage? I have somebody working seems, on that now. So seems like a good idea. I mean, we might be able to borrow some of the summary code from RFC bot itself since uh, or rather RFC bot RS because it would be helpful to have the list of who hasn't checked off as well. Yeah, if we all the more reason to merge RFC bot and Rust bot at some point. But. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, going back to items that are on this list. Uh, so I'm assuming that 82633 and 84366 don't have any current updates at this time? Uh, 82633, I wrote some notes there, which I should paste in. Uh, Felix Esteban and I spent an hour or half an hour or something talking about this issue. We decided that, I think we decided we don't like, we, we narrowed down to the approach we want to do, uh, which was basically what Esteban did in his PR, except that for some reason, the PR has a lot of kind of little ifs and conditions and stuff that makes it more complicated than it seems like it should be. So the action item now is to spend some more time trying to reproduce where all those came from and, and why they seem necessary and how we could fix it. Um, so we made some progress. We ruled out of the three approaches, we renewed it down to one. I just didn't quite understand why the PR uh, had as many caveats as it did. That's good. And then any updates on 84366? I don't remember if this was last week. I reviewed the PR and was generally happy. Uh, it might need to be extended slightly. It looks like this was around a week ago. Um, so I think that's probably close to being ready to land. 
I will get back to it. I owe Aaron Sounds Hill good. another review. Okay, then one we don't have any notes on is uh, 84533, functions, closures, and higher ranked trait bound trait objects can implement traits such that the validity of associated types is never checked. Yeah, that I haven't had that much time to dig into. I think it's, if I remember, I think it's pretty related to some other bugs that were longstanding bugs that we've been working towards fixing and we're actually making some progress around dealing with stuff under binders and so forth. But uh, yeah, none. Well, okay. one thing I would add is none of these p highs, they're like, they're all things we should definitely fix. <laughs> so I'm happy to keep them open for a while, but none of them are recent regressions that I'm aware of uh, okay. or particularly acute. So given that, is it in practice p high or should this be marked as somehow important but priority medium? Yeah, I think there's been a change in the compiler team's p labeling, which our like triage has not caught up with. Compiler team distinguishes p critical from p high, where p critical is like release blocker, release blocker, right? Okay. And I think so that was the original intent of p high, but we got had some great inflation. Uh, so maybe we want to change our triage report to p critical, arguably. I don't know. I would like to have a sort of soundness review, but I'm not sure that this triage meeting is the best forum for that. Yeah, I, I don't think we're going to make forward progress on some of these items, even if we bring them up in each meeting, other than to do a status check. And so if there's a status check that is valuable, we can continue to do that. But this is not the meeting in which that yeah. issue is going to be worked through. I guess I'd like another action item, Mark, to remove or refactor p high issue listing. I think for this meeting, I'd prefer to see new p high issues, like new soundness issues we should nominate and talk about. And then we should find a more sustainable and better better suited approach to closing them. Um, this, this also feeds issue. into ongoing discussions about uh, where type system soundness traits and similar should be discussed. I think Nico, you mentioned the idea of uh, taking some of these to WG traits. Yes, I, I would like to have a different meeting where we just do this <laughs> and we can go deep on stuff. Uh, this particular issue, it's really hard for me to tell from the, um, uh, I'll call it the comment stream from the author, like whether it really is related to a pre-existing bug that has been filed or if they believe they have found something that's distinct, even if it is a longstanding issue. Um, and we noted the, in the compiler team, we just said, we believe this is a longstanding issue, but it's really hard to like, you know, make sense of whether it's really. Uh, yeah, I think there. it's, I'm not sure either. I didn't look closely enough, but I think it's, I think it's a, probably a sort of new variation on an old theme. This is my hunch mm -hmm. from reading the example. Like it's, it's not the same exact manifestation, but it is sort of the same underlying problem. Um, that this this scheme was just flawed, uh, but I'm not sure. I have to read it more closely. If we do end up with a deep dive meeting, then uh, I may be able to scare up some additional uh, type system help to drive in that direction. Okay. Uh, so shall we assume that 84591 is in the same general family? Yes. Or would you like to talk about that one a bit? Those two seem very closely related, 84533 okay. and 84591. OK. Any commentary on 85099? I see a comment from you, Nico, saying not prepared to summarize quite yet. Yeah, only to say that it looks, it feels very similar to the prior pin on soundnesses that we had. Um, I haven't quite. Uh, figured out if it's, is it some, is it something there where we need another negative impul or if it's something about coercion sized or both. <laughs> but we knew that coercion sized had some flaws, but we thought they were limited to custom types. Whereas this seems to suggest you can do it without a custom impul. Okay. 
then in that case, I think we will want to follow up on these in a future meeting when we have a better idea of their severity and how long they've been an issue. But for the moment, at least, let's skip past those unless anybody has a specific desire to talk about them further. One uh, thing I'll could, add is... Did, did you on. want an action item for either of these? Uh, I mainly just wanted one to refactor this list. I don't want action items for the specific bugs, I don't oh. think. Uh, I don't know. I don't usually track that that way. Um, I'll write them down. One thing I wanted to say is I am interested in something. I have not figured out how best to assess priority. Sometimes it's very clear that something is very important. And other times, like a lot of these, it's sort of unclear to me. And so that's something I'm interested in hearing thoughts on if people have them uh, offline. But OK. Uh, stepping forward a bit, we don't have any Rust Lang reference nominations today. So let's go on to nominated PRs and issues. We have a tracking issue for 2345, allow panicking and constants. It looks like uh, Ali OBK nominated this 16 days ago uh, to review a stabilization report proposal. Yep. And I think we had some action items for people to take a look at it in the past. Probably that's still necessary. It does look like there's some further ongoing discussion, but it's not clear if any of that uh, invalidates the stabilization proposal. Yeah, it's a little unclear to me. I'd still it would looks have... like, go on. I was just going to say, I still would like to see that pulled into its own issue as well, but I didn't act on it yet. It looks like the main point of continued discussion is whether where on the scale from hard error to deny by default lint, we want uh, constant panics and similar constant errors. This is what we had last week. Ah. I don't know, Scott. Where's is Scott here? Scott appears to be here. Did you Scott get a chance? Here. Scott didn't get a chance to look at it. Okay. That's not a problem. Maybe we should move on and keep that same summary. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Next up, we have an addition item. Uh, add Exper 2020X macro pattern. I believe there was discussion in this context about whether and what to call. Uh, yeah, I think there's no desire to do this for the current edition. However, um, the short version is that uh, we have some divergence in the set of expressions that we accept in different places, apparently, over time. And we may want to sort of, for addition.next, make a new non-terminal that, or redefine the expert non-terminal and make some new non-terminals for the other pieces, I guess. Um, I think I would maybe ask the meta question of like, do we want to do this now? And what do we need to do that? <laughs> Sorry, to clarify, you're saying, are, are we currently trying to choose a name for a feature we're not planning on adding? I, I don't think not. that's the proposal, no. <laughs> Uh, okay. It sounds like the question is, how do we want to handle the fact that expression syntax has diverged from what macro expert accepts? And the two independent questions are, what might we do to transition to, should we transition to expert matching that in a future edition, not 2021, because it's too late for that? And if we do, then what should we use as naming to facilitate that transition. I see, thank you for clarifying. So for example, we could choose to switch Exper over in 2024 and have an Exper 2021 or Exper 2015, whatever we see as an appropriate name. 
or vice versa, we may want to forward reference the new expert syntax from the current edition, but naming is not our primary difficulty there. The primary question is, what do we want to do for this transition? We also could just say, you know what, we don't need to figure this out right now. <laughs> but Right. I don't think we want to solve this problem in this meeting. It's more, we may wish to solve this problem sooner than two and a half years from now when we are... Uh, right. I'd rather we do it. Together. Exactly. I'd rather we do it up front. Right. But those two so features are not edition. stable. Next sounds good. I think it would be plausible to say, let's revisit this when one of those two features stabilizes. Like until then, um, who cares? Un unless it has implications, right, for their stabilization, I guess. But it, it 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 does feel like what's missing, at least for me, is like a sort of assessment from someone of like, <laughs> I don't know. There's there's some sort of vagueish comments, but it feels like maybe Petroshenkov or something could you know say uh, definitively. I want like I think what I want is the grammar. <laughs> yes, yes, please. I, like I read the write up and I. I feel a little bad because I asked somebody for this and they sort of wrote something, but I, I don't, it didn't quite satisfy me. I think I no, want to ask again to be like, no, I just, I want like, give me the, the non-terminals. Tell me what's happening. Cause I don't understand. Uh, so effectively, what is the expert syntax that isn't matched before that needs to be matched now? Yes. Something more precise than inline const and let chains, but actually what is the grammar amb ambiguity that prevents us from doing this now? Right, and it might be that the content is in those paragraphs. It's just that it's not expressed in the. I have to like sit and read them to really know, and I can't do that. <laughs> so I want it expressed in a clearer way. I'm willing to take okay. an action item on that, but I'd also be game to. I'm also going to propose, I think, if unless anyone strongly disagrees, that we not do this until one of those features stabilizes, or it's needed to stabilize one of those features. Um, from, from skimming this, I guess the heart of it is, is just about whether const and let are allowed at the beginning of an expert match. I think that's right. Uh, and those were previously things that uh, could not start an expert, which was used to disambiguate what you were about to start in a macro. I think that's the like, case. This would affect matching item or expert where let was previously unambiguously an item. Right. I think that's exactly the kind of write up I would like to see, though. So I Maybe would. Maybe this observe... needs an RFC. Well, no. I, I do think that your point, Nico, was uh, a good one to start with, which is we don't want to try to make forward progress on this until one or the other or both of those features is stabilized. But in the meantime, that gives people plenty of time to summarize what we should do going forward. And that one, uh, do you want to take the action item for that one? Or is there anybody who could help share that load potentially? Sounds like Felix has a good idea of what I want to. <laughs> I would be... you, you can give me action items here, I guess. I'm staring, I'm still staring at this, but I yeah, in terms of what my gut reactions are, it sounds like my taste is like Nico's. So sure. I would be happy okay. to have this moved into an issue linked from both of those tracking issues, saying like <laughs> Let's figure out a grammar and, and encourage people to be very specific about what it means and what its implications right. are. Um, and to narrowly down. scope that action item, the request is not solve the problem. Uh, the action item is get there to be a clear summary of desired uh, behavior here. Right. So just to make sure that this is not a uh, solve the entire problem action item. Okay. Or just clearly specify what the problem is, I think. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. I imagine that some examples of what would go wrong if we just changed expert would be helpful as well. I think we can imagine those based on examples of how the ambiguity might change, but it would probably be a good idea to have concrete examples spelled out if they have not already been. Yeah. Having okay. trouble coming up with something that parses both ways, actually. So is this just like there's some optimization on picking which macro rules arm we'd run, or? I well, think so. That's a good question to ask. Right. Const doesn't seem like it could parse both ways. It just would require at least two tokens of look ahead to 
decide, oh, you have an open brace after const rather than a uh, name. Uh, I'm pretty sure we do macro parsing. Like, you know, we it's a, it's a recursive descent. So it, in other words, I think we will not, we will do the look ahead. Will, I'm sorry, you said you think we will or will not? I think we will fail to parse the arm and then drop to the next arm. Okay. So, but we could write some tests. Um, Sounds reasonable. And that is exactly the kind of summary that I think it'll make it easier for us to figure this out. If we're talking something that doesn't actually have any real ambiguity, we might not need an addition migration. If there's a concrete ambiguity, then we need to plan for an addition migration. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have anything else to add to 84364 before we move on? Good. I'm happy we resolved it. Yeah, I think we managed to make enough progress in this meeting to narrow down what needs doing. Right. Next up, we have tracking issue for unsizing casts in const fins. This is 64992. This one is a Let's new see one. who nominated this. Uh, Ralph this is a Ralph proposed FCP stabilization request. and produced a stabilization report and a nomination as of three days ago and eight hours ago, respectively. Okay. Cleanse to fan use size prevents certain unsized cuts from happening. Here's the example for those who are not clicking through. So it looks like in a const fun, this would allow doing a cast that will unsize a slice or similar. But only behind a pointer. We, we already stabilized non-pointer. This says that I this think. was already stable in constant static bodies. So it doesn't seem like we're really stabilizing much here unless I'm misunderstanding. That's what it says. I think we should do it. <laughs> Sounds reasonable as well, and I trust Ralph's summary. I'm ready to FCP merge then. Are you doing it on the PR, not the issue, or? I don't care which one we do. I guess the PR is better. I just know about your preference for not doing it on the track. Yeah, you're right. I prefer the, I do care. You're right. I prefer, I prefer the PR. <laughs> That is an interesting procedural difference. Uh, I would observe without necessarily suggesting which one makes more or less sense that the libs team tends to FCP on a tracking issue to make decisions like this. And we do tend to FCP a concrete PR making the stabilization. I yeah. think a big part of the difference there is that we have kept splitting up features on the same tracking issue and sort of ah. running out of FCPs that we can do because you can only do one per issue. It's also just really confusing. Like, even if it's not split, I find it confusing when there's, if you don't do the FCP, then later you have to do another FCP and now there's like a lot of state in the thread. I find it easier to track if the whole FCP discussion is contained in one place. That makes sense. Regardless, is there a, it looks like there is a PR. It is 85078. Yes. I also like, for that matter, I do like, the PR is ideal to me because I think it's usually quite nice to be able to review the diff and see the tests. It makes perfect sense. So who would like to do the FCP oh. on 85078 or does anybody object to doing so? I will so? do it right now. Excellent. then I am posting a comment to 64992 saying exactly that, that the FCP is being started. Done. Okay. Excellent. Next up, we have allow unused variables with to do. We discussed this last week. Yeah, I was going to do something that I didn't do, but I will this week. I'm going to close out all my action names. It's going to be great. 
I don't think we need to discuss it further unless there's new thoughts. Okay. Do you want to drop the nomination and just keep the action item? Yes, that's a good idea. All right. Next up, is there new information to be discussed on 81789, uh, new lint for discuss detecting buggy pointer to int casts? I believe last week we had some summary of what we wanted to request in so far as separating the idea of solving the uh, previous issue with the idea of coming up with a lint that people will find generally useful. Yeah, I think Scott proposed. Actually, we we didn't have Taylor here. We wanted to get Taylor's opinion. Scott proposed removing the fixes so that it doesn't claim to fix the original issue, but that this might still be a useful lint. Right. I think I do think that was the summary from last meeting. Is that we had something we thought was a reasonable path forward that didn't claim to fix the full function issue and proposed a separate way to solve that. But uh, we wanted to wait before calling that a consensus because, Taylor, you were the primary person with objections to the previous approach. So we didn't want to assume that we had a consensus on a new approach without getting feedback. Um, I put so a comment in the, in the thing as well, trying to say what we talked about last week. Yeah, I just read that comment. And then also Nico's response. It seems like the, the remaining question is not, not about whether this solves the original link now. Or, or the original problem now, but about whether or not um, this lint itself is independently valuable and introduces false positives. Um, in terms of storing a pointer in a U32, uh, I don't, I, I don't know. That that seems that seems like if you're writing an explicit as cast for me to store to store a pointer in a U32, you're probably trying to do something, and I don't know that disabling a lint. I don't know. I, I guess I'm I'm curious what what case we're trying to catch with that. Yeah, that's it a good. It's a good. I would feel more motivated if we had like an actual bug to point at. Yeah, I feel like the more we've talked about this one, the fewer things we've been willing to actually lint on it. Because at first it was well, U size is is okay, but everything else isn't. Would, and then I U64 was okay. And then last week we talked about I size being okay. And that probably means that I-64 would be OK. Right. I would be willing to lint on U32 if I felt like that was actually like comprehensively solving a different problem, right? But it seems like it isn't particularly. I, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. I would say this. I have written large quantities of uh, very low level bit manipulation code for file system stuff in Rust. And I found myself uh, adding a lot of as casts for uh, changing between various kinds of types. And while I wasn't intentionally stuffing a pointer into any of those things, I was definitely stuffing uh, slices of things and similar into various places. And it's not hard to imagine accidentally having a pointer instead of what I wanted. And it okay. is not super comforting that this is actually an area where C would give me more cross checks via compiler warnings than Rust does, because C does tell you, even if you cast, that you should not cast directly from a pointer to a smaller than pointer sized integer type on the platform. They don't care about portability. They will warn you if you do pointer to 32 bit, but only if you're on 64 bit it still is a useful catch to tell you, hey, you did something questionable. Here's how to override that if you really wanted to do that. I unfortunately so, have to sign off for another meeting, but I will be on Zulip and available to, to discuss this. I, I feel comfortable with going along with whatever, however the rest of you all feel on this. Um, I okay. think I don't feel particularly strongly, so. Okay. Something, Ken, go ahead, Nico. It's a different case, but I'm just thinking about one of the worst Rust bugs I ever had to debug came from casting a fat pointer to a thin, probably to a U size, where it stripped out the uh, 
the extra word automatically without telling me and then it I, then I somehow got it back uh, is that the kind of bug you're imagining here Josh like you might I could see that it was a pretty um, terrible bug I, I would go a step <laughs> further and say I hadn't imagined something quite that terrible and now I want this even more <laughs> well, in that case it was a use size so it wouldn't have worked but I'm pretty sure ah, but, uh, that's fair um, most of the cases I was dealing with, I had sizes ranging from U8 to U64, and it would have potentially helped to be more confident that I wasn't accidentally leaving off a dereference or similar uh, and ending up throwing a pointer into something. Whenever I use as, I do feel like I am telling the compiler I know what I'm doing. And I don't actually want to get rid of all the guardrails. I just need to make something fit into something else. Yeah. I'd still so, like more as many compiler guardrails as it'll give me. So to your to the thing that's that you were mentioning about the C warnings, how do we feel about lints that are aware of the target they're compiling for? Because we could do the you're compiling for 64 bit and you cast to something to U32 but allow that on, if you're targeting a 32-bit platform. Like, would we feel bad about that? Is that, you know, an acceptable trade-off for reducing false positives? And then, you know, if you, that means you might get new warnings if you compile on a different platform, but we would be able to warn on a lot more potentially erroneous things. Right. You have a start. And as a bonus, it, uh, you would get the warnings precisely on the platforms that are more likely to break. So yeah. no faults, probably no faults positives, potentially I, more faults negatives, but that's okay. I do think that there is a lot to be said for, for avoiding doing that. I know that even today, sort of like in Rust CI, if there's a lint or something that triggers on a, I don't know, not usual lint configuration, like even if it's Windows, but most people develop on Linux, or if it's like, I don't know, Rust stock lints, which aren't caught by Rust C itself. So if you run X by check, it doesn't give you it. There's, you know, it, it, it's confusing and, and often painful uh, because it's either hard to run those locally or you have to figure out what even is being run. Um, yeah. And I think adding a, another dimension of, you know, I see a lint about a cast that, you know, I'm clearly compiling the same code. There's no configs anywhere. Um, right. it, it would be very confusing yeah. to, to I, see warnings. I, I, I'm against it unless we have a really strong evidence. Like, I feel like that's a cure worse than the disease. <laughs> uh, and that I don't, I think people who are targeting 32-bit probably like, and only 32-bit, it's probably okay that they opt into saying that. Is there maybe an argument for a lint group that covers things like this? So that, you know, it's not, yes. not like we're infecting the whole universe, but, you know, say, look, we're gonna make a group and then people doing this kind of portable, like specific. I would like a, I would like a, 32-bit lint group or something. So you could say, allow a 32-bit specific target. <laughs> That's like an that. interesting point. The uh, I would also add that I would be happy to have a version of this, even if it were something I could opt into. Uh, and I would happily opt into it when writing a bunch of low-level code like that. I certainly think this is not something that has to start as a warn we could make something that starts as an allow, can be opted into, and then that will give us the opportunity to see uh, how well that works in practice. And people can say, hey, yeah, I'm doing deny that on my code base and haven't run into any false positives, but here's some bugs it caught. Or even just, it makes me feel safer. Yeah. So. The, the other direction I think we could go here is we're having trouble with this because there isn't really another way to do it. We conveniently have two people here with libs who could put on libs hats for a bit. Um, if we had a method like, I really like the cast methods on pointers right now so that I can't, you know, accidentally change the constants of something using the cast method, and it's more likely that I got get that one right. Would we want to talk about, hey, maybe we want to shelve this until we have two bits and from bits or something, like floats do this that convert point. to a U size? And then the answer here can be 
once we have a way that is a dedicated library method that is clear about what you're actually trying to do and would definitely not compile for the you forgot a dereference versions or whatever, I, I guess see. if you have a pointer to a pointer, you'd still have trouble. But then we could shelve the conversation about how to do this lint until the lint can say, if you really did mean to do this, then call this library method. And for example, method. if you had a truncate method that uh, only took integer to smaller integer, but otherwise did not uh, let you get away with anything else that could potentially help people not do things they don't mean to do with as. Mara, did you have something you're going to say there? Uh, yeah, the, the, this two bits method, would it include the, the uh, fat pointer part or not? Because that's kind of the same issue then, right? I think I would honestly expect to not be able to call it on a fat pointer. I would expect to be calling two bits exclusively on uh, primitives. Yeah, OK. On a thin? Really good, like address in the name or something. Uh, Oh, I see what you're yeah, saying. On a pointer? Yeah, I, I think if we were going to do it on pointers, we would do it on uh, raw pointers only. That still could be fat, but I, I would agree with uh, make it explicit. Don't allow it on fat yeah. pointers. If you want the data pointer yeah. from a fat pointer, you can say so. All right. Well, and we have the bound that we're putting on null now. That's There's the trade alias for this is thin, which says that the metadata is unit, right? So we can right, right. we have uh, so what, the way to so, specify that. So I, I think I think this is something Taylor also proposed. I like your path, Scott, and maybe we can tell the suggest to the OP that whoever opened the PR that like we like the idea of the lint, but we would rather see it coupled with this uh, kind of work. I think that's a much better direction. I think we should just be moving away from as and introducing better alternatives. Definitely in favor. Um, one other bit of context just for reference. Uh, the other case that we might be able to do better with methods rather than as is that I find myself writing a lot of code that is 64-bit only and needs to index things with U64s. And so I'm doing a lot of cast U64 to U size and cast U size to U64. And I would love to just say, I'm on 64-bit. Those are basically the same type. Let me do exclusively that and nothing else. Like cast from U size to solely the sized value that it matches. That would be completely different than truncate. That is like convert oh, same I size see. only. Yeah, I, if I'm on 32-bit, scream and die, please. Right. I, I still would want to just be able to index by all the unsigned types, but that's apparently hard. <laughs> oh, I would like to catch, I would like the compiler to complain at me more, not let me get away with more. In any case, it sounds like there's a family of things going on here, and this might be worth uh, a discussion inspired by this one in a libs meeting to try to figure out, or at least for a start, possibly a thread on the TLibs Zulip stream. Mara, uh, what do you think about the two of us starting something like that for potential discussion? Yeah, sure. Maybe uh, make sure to CC the PR author. Sounds good. We should also CC uh, T Lang to drag people into that discussion. Sure. OK. Then let's uh, hit pause on that one for the moment uh, in favor of a TLibs discussion to give ourselves more options to potentially direct people to. So you got Josh and Mara to start thread. Uh, and is there a action on the PR itself? Should we just close it? Or we should at least denominate it, please. Uh, denominate, yes. I think we should summarize and say we would like to have some libs options, or we would like to entertain the idea of some libs options for alternative methods that are more precise about what you want, so that if we're going to lint against uses of as, we have something more precise for people to point to. I certainly would be happier if 
cases of false positives on an as went were not steered towards as bigger number as smaller number if we instead had something smarter to point people to that would be great uh, I, I'm happy to take the action item to, to write up a comment on the issue. Sounds good. Okay, let's uh, move on. We have six more items and 15 minutes. So I think we're not going to get through all of these. Would anybody like to bubble one to the top before we uh, dive just linearly through them? Some of them I think we may have covered a bit in previous meetings. Likely, yes. Uh, Gender attributes we talked a bit about last time, but it, I don't yes, know that we, we didn't actually have time to there finish was that one last time. We might that want to that bubble was that time up. critical. Yeah, that's a good one. Good call. Let's bubble that to the top here. Nico, are you already doing that? Um, sure. OK. All right, let's talk about that one briefly. And then if anybody else wants to bump one of the other five to the top, then please, by all means, uh, bump it up so that we're more likely to talk about it before the end of the meeting. So 84879, add back support for inner attributes on non-block expressions. This has gone through a bunch of discussion. One of the motivating cases that led to asking for this uh, was I believe internals of, it was either REST format or REST doc, and somebody suggested they'd be happy to just change that tool to stop taking advantage of this. But still, this is worth discussing. Wait, say that again. The last thing you just uh, said. One of the requests was for re-enabling these was that it turns out one of our tools, it was either REST, Rust format or REST doc, I don't remember which, was using this and uh, or possibly Clippy, I don't recall which. Um, one of those was using it, and there was an issue with this when there was a an attempt to rebase. But at the same time, the tool, one of the tool maintainers was willing to just drop the use of it. So it was not actually critical. But nonetheless, we should still make a, an intentional decision here rather than just, well, I guess we've uh, left it this way and we haven't reverted it. The other thing was that Ditolne opened an issue. Here it is, 84414, which seemed related to me. Uh, or I guess it's a PR. Um, permitting the Rust, permitting things like this. Uh, and it seems to me inconsistent to support them there but not in a match i don't know yeah they're not exactly the same but i mean those are items and right that's it's... an interesting question <laughs> yeah it's it's just similar ish it's not the same thing um petra I... think i've made a point of uh that there is a consistent rule to describe what we now allow having removed the support for uh, inner attributes on non-block experts. That was 17 days ago. I also, I, I remember now I reread Aaron's comment. I see that I wrote this and Aaron Hill and he, although the performance is not an issue now, it sounded like the way that they made performance work was basically by hacking, like hard coding various patterns. Uh, which is not great. <laughs> so it did affect my opinion somewhat. Uh, I'm somewhat inclined to, that made me somewhat inclined to just let it stand. Yeah, uh, Aaron, Aaron's comment there that says, I'm fairly indifferent to the question of inner attributes in general. I like agreed right. on that one. Like for inside a module or something, sure, but. Right. I've never felt like, oh, yes, it would be really, really handy to put this inside the struct instead of outside the struct and to have it still be a doc comment. Right. I can honestly say I have only ever seen two cases for inner attributes. One was top level on a module, and the other is obscure things done with macros. I've never seen code written using inner attributes otherwise that seemed like it was clearer than just moving the attribute out a level. 
I'm, yeah. The one thing I would say is, well, I think we showed some cases where they're up. I mean, a third case would be tagging match arms, um, bodies of match arms, or if expressions. Um, we, if you recall, I gave an example like. that's not affected by this change um and uh well uh yeah. one thought there if we're specifically I, talking about things like likely and unlikely i don't think there's a fundamental reason we couldn't make that an outer attribute on the 33. the exclamation point makes it look like it says not likely <laughs> that's also true <laughs> <laughs> well yeah you could imagine it yeah um, um, and I think one other ambiguity that came up last time we discussed this was if you were to write something inside of the body of an if expression that had an else, did it attach to the if or to the if else? Oh, that's a good one. I think, I, I think in general, I would, yeah, if else ambiguity, I would say like, so there's this, right? There's this is, is very unclear. <laughs> This doesn't make any sense. Uh, how do you even tag the elf else, right? right? But then there's, I do feel personally, I know that not everyone agrees. In particular, Mark seemed to disagree with this, but I personally feel like if you want to be very clear about the scope within an expression, a parenthesized inner attribute is as unambiguous as you can possibly get. But um, so if I look at that uh, match example in the notes right now, I'm pretty sure that one is allowed right now because that's a block expression and inner attributes are still supported there. I agree. This example is still allowed. The most important examples to me are the blocks and those still work. And that also applies to um, this one is right. Not. So let's phrase the question a slightly different way. Um, would anybody like to specifically make a case for not letting this stand and reverting it? And in particular, I want to suggest, would anybody like to make the case for not letting this stand prior to having a specific to apply? Like just with today's attributes, they want to re-add this. My understanding is that this lexes but doesn't parse today, or rather it did before we made this change. I'm okay with removing it and you know we can always add it back. It's it was an accidental stabilization. It's not widely used. Well, I mean, I wanted to phrase that very openly like this is not a please, you know, bow to the consensus. I genuinely want to ask would anybody like to suggest that there is a reason we should keep this and revert the change based just on what we know today and what people want to do with attributes today? broke for at least yeah. rates. I mean, there is, I, I don't know. They're not yeah. like the most notable of crates, obviously, but I do think it is, you know, worth considering that <laughs> it's not like it's a harmless change in that sense. This is true. Uh, do we have a link somewhere for those crates and have they already been fixed in the current version? Uh, I don't know. I can, well, I mean, they're, if they're public, then uh, let me, me They're mentioned it. in the PR, the original PR that removes support. I can part of the greater analysis. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up the link. Looking. That's a good point. Here are the quoted code from the regressions, just not the actual uh, crates. Yeah, I think I would say my argument in favor is. It broke four crates. It's useful, like as evidenced by it's used. <laughs> All the cases that broke were uh, match expression, were, were match things, whereas the inner use of inner attributes inside of a match block. Is that right? Looks like. Looks like it. Yeah. I mean, is that One of which is the dot yeah. comment probably just is unused dot comment already. Right. Is yeah. this like an incredibly special case that we could consider just could adding just support, support that. for? Yeah. It's also like, yeah. 
We could just support that one case. Well, it looks like there's two cases. There's a, they're, they all occur inside of a match. One of them is a dot comment that probably didn't mean to be a dot comment, and the other three are lint allows. Yeah, I mean, I think we would just allow any attribute there, right? I wouldn't limit ourselves. That just seems like a right. world of pain. <laughs> that is an interesting compromise. I suspect that also resolves the performance concern. Although I don't fully understand what caused that. I think if we allow macro attributes and we don't, or, you know, we don't want to disallow them, then currently the implementation of how we do macros, you have to sort of retokenize the whole thing that you're passing to the macro. Um, and so obviously if sort of you see a potential call to a macro, it carries some performance costs because you have to carry around that, you know, bag of tokens. Well, that might be a case for, that might be an argument for special casing allow then, because we could know that allow definitely doesn't require reparsing, right? Probably. <laughs> I, I don't know. I hope I allow know doesn't when, require reparsing. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure. I don't know whether like even config is enough to, to cause it or, or I, I, I don't know enough to, to be very confident, but. I think that's that's my understanding of the performance concern, at least. If the if the special I see, or no custom inner attributes are banned, so it only need to pessimize token collection. I think the problem with performance came about from like expressions are super common, and so if it could be on any expression, I don't know. We could ask. I I think like just ha having it apply to match may already be quite a bit better but i mean we could also the other version of this we could do is say we parse it and then put a warning saying it doesn't do anything because that would be completely allowed by stability guarantees for the four cases that we actually know about it doesn't do anything for the allows it does actually work. We tested. Yeah, this before. I, I just mean that anything related to allows, if we change it to so it starts warning or something, it's lint changes that's allowed to. I don't know. I'm, I'm confused. So, <laughs> I, I guess one one question that maybe is is more immediate in the in the few minutes we have left is is whether we want to suggest a sort of revert of the PR. Right, like right now, sort of nightly is in some sense broken for you know these four crates at least. Do you have any I idea if Petrochenko like... went and submitted PRs to them, or if anyone did? Not that I know of, but I don't know. I I feel mildly uncomfortable assuming that that's you know sufficient in some sense. I think we should. I I mean, I guess I feel like we should make a decision about whether we're going to do it or not. Uh, I... Well, as one possible approach here to try to unstick this, we do feel like there was a procedural fail on the previous FCP or similar in that a concern didn't get registered. And so this went forward when we still wanted to talk it through further. So the two options for us to solve that are either to rapidly discuss it and figure out if we want to let it stand before it finds itself in a stable or beta, or alternatively to revert it and then discuss it at our leisure. And phrased that way, even if we want to keep it, there is no huge rush to keep it, but there is a huge rush to, if we want to not keep it. So by that argument, perhaps we should revert even if we are in favor of this change and then discuss this change more at our leisure and not have a procedural failure. Isn't the counter to that, that if you if you revert the PR, then there's the chance that more crates will start using this thing and thus the, 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 the impact will grow, could grow of trying to do the um, change do later? Do we currently have a lint that flags this? No. Doubtful. Would I mean, it be that, uh, maybe the doc comment one. 
Possibly, yeah, because it's an unused dot comment. Would it make sense for us if we want to phase this out to rather than uh, just immediately remove it, instead introduce a warn by default or deny by default lint, which would be I mean, allowed breaking? Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> the it typical is. rust I'm bug. Trying to that, bring it, alternatives up. that would be the rust. That is the proper procedure. Like it does say, I'm looking at the actual, the rule that we've technically written, if fewer than 10 total affected crates are, we can move straight to an error if we wish, although you're still recommended to do a warning period. That's what Forge says, for example. Um, Which, I mean, that's a policy we could discuss because it's pretty clear that uh, we're not always comfortable with the idea of breaking even one crate. Yeah, I, that was written a long time back and I pulled that number out of the yeah. air. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, I, it, but that said, like, I do think the number of affected crates is relatively small, so. Um, I think the other, part there for me is these macros, the, the attributes that this crate is using are not like complicated and semantically affecting macros. Like well, if they if they get that and delete it, their code will continue to do the same thing. We're at it's more about your dependencies breaking and so on, I guess. But we're at two yeah, we're true. at time. I definitely found your I despite what I've said, I agree with Josh's premise that in general, we should back out and take time to discuss if it's if there's no burning reason to add time pressure. Um, so. Do we do we feel differently between things like inside tuples and arrays and struct expression, struct literals? Would it, we would we maybe say we'll put I, this back for matches, but not the other ones? I would be happy, okay with that compromise, especially if the main concern is breakage. We have no evidence that anyone's used it for anything else. Do we agree that the main concern is breakage? For what's worth, I think I think so, but I haven't heard any arguments. I think arguments so. So far as like, if somebody had a concrete thing they wanted to use it for, they are more than welcome to propose it, and nothing stops us from re-adding this. That's roughly where I stand. I think it's useful, but I'm willing to wait till I have a good example <laughs> uh, that will justify it essentially. I do feel that like supporting it in structs but not matches is wacky. Uh, even though they're not the same thing, they just look so visually similar. So that's another argument for me in favor of adding matches back. Um, OK. Which I will add. Uh, let's try to avoid uh, keeping people too far after the, uh, um, after the hour. So I think we're going to need to take this uh, offline. Yeah. Well, why don't we leave a comment proposing, uh, uh, asking Petroshenkov about match. We can do that. OK. Uh, you said, we, why don't we leave a comment? Uh, I said I can do that. Item picker? I'll do it. I'll do it right now. OK. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for taking the vast majority of our action items, Nico. <laughs> From the code, it seems like it might be easy to try to just make a PR that adds match back in. So anyway, okay, maybe I'll do that as a game. Not 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 an action item, just just thinking. I wouldn't object. Okay, let's let everybody go for uh, three minutes after the hour here then. Yep. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. All right. Bye. Bye.